What up nerds? My name is Leslie. Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to do a little bit of a different review. Something I rarely do dedicated reviews for here on the channel are short story collections. The ones I have done have typically been a collection by the same author. The reason for this is simple. It's extremely difficult to talk about short fiction in a non-spoiler way. But we're going to try it today. I want to talk to you about a new collection from James Flynn called A Bunch of Five. The little tagline here at the top says five stories that pack a punch. That is such an apt description. All five of these stories carry some sort of impact to their reader. I think there's going to be a lot of people who are going to read these stories that are going to find themselves in touch with these characters that are going through things. Gosh, this is so hard. There's something I want to say about some of the characters, but I feel that that will ruin the experience for you if I tell you, hey, the author's really good at doing this. Then you're going to be looking for them stories and I don't want to lose you all. Okay. This is hard. We're going to persevere. We're going to try and do this. The very first story in this collection is the one type of story that is my favorite that James Flynn does, and that is an urban legend. The first story is about Bigfoot. Eric is fascinated with the legend of Bigfoot and he's come across some grainy video that is a spotting of Bigfoot. Rumor has it that this film was taken on an island in Vietnam. Eric talks his buddy Mac into going to this island. They're taking cameras. They're going to walk the island and see if they can't stumble across a sighting of their own. What they find it's up to you, the reader. You get to decide what they find and what they find and where this one went. I never saw it coming. Oh my gosh, it was so good. But that title of that story is called Ignorance is Bliss and it is absolutely my favorite in the collection. The next short story in this collection is called Dataism. This is not a topic I enjoy reading about. This is horror to me. This is a future that I could see happening with us. Look around. Everybody always has their phone in their hands. My husband and I were out walking our dogs yesterday. There's always tons of people out exercising here, which is great, but the majority of the time they're doing it while looking down at their phone, which is so dangerous. I see kids riding bikes, looking at phones. I saw one on a freaking scooter. It was an electric scooter, sure, looking at their phone and I'm just going, these are all accidents waiting to happen. What the heck is so important? You can't go outside and take a walk for 20 minutes without looking at your phone. Uh, some of the people that live here, I've never seen their faces because they never look up from their phones. I'm just, I am boggled by that. The story is about in the future, humans are required to record and upload and share everything on the web. There's all these different media outlets. You have to share everything. And if you don't, punishable by law, maybe even death. While I do not like the topic and I don't enjoy reading about it, I have to give props to the author for how well written it is and just illustrating where our future could possibly be headed. The next short story in this collection is called Gene Slave, G-E-N-E. -E. And I thought this is not going to be one for me, but our main character is a retired adult movie star and he is getting the opportunity to participate in a fantasy bucket list item. I almost quit at the beginning but I decided to wait to see is this what this whole story is going to be about and it is not. I laughed. It is a horror story but I was cracking up. I actually called it a cautionary tale when I did my little mini review on Instagram. It was so good. It's probably my second favorite in the collection. The last two short stories in this collection both were very emotional, but in different ways. So from riches to rags, our main character Carlson worked several jobs. This man made pinching pennies an art form. He has amassed half a million dollars and he's retired now, but he spends his days constantly monitoring his wealth, moving it into investments, purchasing stock. He's just made this a full-time job. One day he has an epiphany. There's a big thing that I can do to save more money. And I thought, uh, where's this going to go? And then I kind of got a clue of where it was going, or I thought I did and did go that way, but it progressed in a way that I didn't see. 
that kind of made it seem like it had a happy ending, just maybe not one that you and I would think would be a happy ending. Very curious to hear your thoughts on this one. So if any of you do pick up this collection when you read that one, I would love to chat about this story in particular just to see how it hits different people. I just found it very interesting. The last short story is called The Dutiful Hit and it is about a hitman who gets a very interesting client. Graham has made it a point to never ask why. Why do you want me to kill this person? He's never done that. It was particularly hard with this client because of the way the client described the hit. The descriptors use regarding the person. It just really stayed on his mind and when he goes to perform the hit and it does make sense, it's just another story I would love to talk at length with on your opinion. It's one that I think is going to hit differently depending on your thoughts, your personal belief, but my goodness, I have a stance on what happened here, but when I saw it from this character's point of view, I found myself looking at it differently. And I think that is what the author's intent is with his stories. They're such great horror stories, but there's always that underlying theme. I mean, honestly, I would call this literary horror. There's a theme to each one of these stories, just something to make you, the reader, look at your feelings about different subjects or notice something that might be under your nose with someone in your life. He continues to impress me with his ability of storytelling. To be a storyteller, you have to be able to do more than just tell a story. You have to be able to tap into the reader's emotions and feelings and get them thinking that is the mark of a good storyteller. And to me, James Flynn is that type of storyteller. So I hope you check out this collection. It is available June 1st. There is a pre-order link down in the description box below, as well as a link to the author's website. If you would like to learn more about him as an author, see what other works he has available, highly encourage you to check him out. Thank you so much for watching and listening today with me trying to review a short story collection. Please comment below. Below. Did I pass or fail? What do you think? Should I try to review short story collections or should I just kind of let those fall by the wayside and stick to my little mini reviews on Instagram? I would love any and all feedback that you can help me with. Have a great rest of your day and I'll catch you in the next one.